In this video, we're going to be taking a look at measure tools. Now, the measure tools can be found up under the Analyze tab. It's the first group. You'll see there's a number of different tools. We'll discuss each one of those short of the volume because we're in a 2D file. The first one is Measure Distance. I'm going to go ahead and select that. On the Tool Settings window, you're going to notice under Method, there are technically five methods. This is actually one icon, but five separate tools. The first one we'll look at is between points. So I'm going to select that. On the tool settings window under true, you're going to see distance and total. And we'll talk about that in a moment once we start making measurements. On this architectural landscape detail, we're going to be measuring this planter and we're going to see what the length of the sides are. So I'm going to pick one corner down here. I'm going to do a data. I'm going to go to the other end and pick the other corner, data. On the tool settings window, you're going to notice distance says 30. Total says 30 also. Now, if I press reset, I can begin a brand new measurement between points. Or if I continue uninterrupted and do a third data, the total will add the 30 plus the next distance. So watch when I click on the next corner here. I'm going to do a data. You can see that distance was 10. But you add that to the 30 and you have a total of 40. So that is what that's for. So I'm going to go ahead and hit reset. We do have a method called perpendicular, but I wanted to point out that using AccuDraw, the method of between points can be used instead of the perpendicular method. So let's say I'm going to measure a distance from this point here, and I want to see what the perpendicular distance is to the outer edge of this column. Now, as I move my cursor here, you can see it just jumps right to it. But if I move my cursor out to the left and on my keyboard, I hit enter. This is the AccuDraw Smart Lock. Now I'm locked on this axis. Now I can move my cursor up to this point and you're going to see that it's perpendicular. So when I do a data, there is the perpendicular distance. And that can be done with between points using AccuDraw. Wanted to point that out. Now the next method we're going to look at is going to be a long element. This can be used along any linear or radial element. And we're going to be using along these arcs here. So let's say this arc, I want to measure the length along the arc between the start point here and where it intersects this dashed line. So I'm going to move my cursor down here. I'm going to data on the end of the arc. You can see a thick line appear. This is the along part. I'm going to come up to the intersection where the dashed line meets the arc, and I'm going to do a data. And on the tool settings window, you can see there's the distance along the arc. So I'm going to hit reset a couple of times, clear that out. So the next example, we're going to measure along this arc, but we want to measure from the intersection of this dashed line along the arc to the intersection of this dashed line along the arc. I'm going to show you a little trick here. What I'm going to do is move my cursor along the line. And that's not the element I want to measure along, but it is intersecting the element I do want to measure along. So as I'm, my cursor is right there, I'm going to do a data. Now you can see it highlights the dashed line. To cycle through the next element available, I hit reset. And you can see now it's highlighting the arc. Nice little trick. So now I'm going to slide along the arc till we get to the next dashed line intersecting. I'm going to do a data. And there's my distance, 50.619 feet. This will work on linear elements just as nicely as it works on the arcs. So I'm going to hit reset. In this next example, when we're looking at the method of perpendicular, it has a checkbox called segment only. I'm going to uncheck this initially. Now, let's say again, I want to measure from the edge of the planter perpendicular out to the edge of this column. So if I pick this element here on that segment, you can see as I move my cursor out, you'll see a yellow line that's perpendicular. Now, I didn't check segment only. So as I move my cursor around the corner, You'll see it becomes perpendicular to the next segment of that shape. And you can see I can move it around. Now, if I wanted it to remain perpendicular to that segment, then on the tool settings window, I would check segment only. And if I move my cursor back in, you can see as I move it around, I remain perpendicular to the segment that I initially selected. Now I can move up to this column. I'm going to data. And there's my perpendicular distance. Next method, we're going to be looking at minimum. So let's say again in this detail here, we have 
our wall and we also have our planter. And we need to make sure that we have minimum distances between there for maybe maintenance vehicles, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this edge of the planter shape. And then I'm gonna pick this line up above. And then you can see it shows me the minimum distance between those two. I can again select this line here in this side and it'll show me that. And I can also select the arc and select one segment of the shape. And you can see there's my minimum distance there. So that's minimum between, very handy tool for figuring out and maintaining clearances. So I'll hit reset. The last method is gonna be maximum between. Now this one, there's not a lot of case uses, but it finds the two farthest points on an element. So let's say I pick this outer edge of the column, and then I pick this next element out here, and I data, and you can see it shows me the two points which are farthest apart. I'm not sure why we'd want to know that, but there's probably a case use you can think of out there. So I'm gonna hit reset. There's that maximum distance between. Instead of going back up to the ribbon to access these tools, they're also located on the pop-up menu. So on my keyboard, if I hit the space bar, on the third row, the very first icon is the measure tools. It's the measure group. And if I click on that icon, you're going to see there are the measure tools. And the next tool we're gonna to look at is measure radius. So I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna pan on up so we can see some radial elements. And I'm going to just data, left click on this arc, and then on the tool settings window, you can see there's a primary radius and there's a primary diameter. You can continue to data on arcs or radial elements that could be circles or arcs, and it will tell you the primary radius and the primary diameter. So we're gonna to go to the next measure tool. So I'm gonna hit space bar, third row, first icon. We're gonna look at measure angle. Now to illustrate this, I've drawn some elements off to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and pan over and zoom in. And I'm hoping this will illustrate how this tool works a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this element, this line, and you're gonna see a green arrow appear on that. Now that's gonna come into play when I do the next element. So I'm gonna pick this next line and you're going to see there's a red arrow. Now, if you look at the tool settings window, it's telling me my angle is 45 degrees. The arrows are indicating which angle it's measuring. Now, you notice there's 135 degrees over here. Well, how do I see that? I would click on either one of the two arrows. I would just left click on the arrow and you can see it reflects the other angle, the other direction. So that's the measure angle between lines tool. So I'm gonna zoom back out, come back over here. The next tool we're gonna to look at, I'm gonna hit the space bar, I'm gonna to go to measure, and the next one's gonna be measure length. Now for this one, I'm gonna turn on a level for some irrigation lines. So I'm gonna open up my level display. The shortcut is control E, and there's a level here for supply line. I'm gonna turn that on, and then I'm gonna go ahead and close the level display. Now these are separate lines and I created them as that just to help illustrate how this tool works. If I click on this one element right here, one left click or data, you're gonna see on the tool settings window it gives me a length and a direction. My length is 106 feet. If I click on this next element, you can see it shows me my length is 20 feet and my direction is 45 degrees in a few seconds. I need to get total linear length. I don't wanna sit here and click on these elements one at a time. This tool, Measure Length, does support a selection set. So I'm gonna hit my space bar. I'm gonna to go to Element Selection. I'm gonna select all of those lines using Element Selection. Once I have them all selected, I'm gonna hit the space bar. I'm gonna go back to Measure. I'm gonna to return to my measure length tool and as soon as I select it, what you're gonna see on the tool settings window is the combined total length of all of the elements. There you go. So it's 171.555 total linear feet. So if you're trying to get linear quantities for any type of material, whether it's conduit, piping, irrigation, all kinds of things, they don't have to be a single element and you can get a sum. What you wanna be careful though is, if there are duplicate elements, for example, if I had duplicate lines here and was unaware of that, 
this would throw my calculations off. So you want to be cautious about that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit reset. I'm going to unselect my elements and I'm going to turn that level off. So I'm going to go back to my level display. I'm going to turn that level off because the next tool we're going to look at is measure area. So I'm going to hit the space bar, first icon, third row, measure. And then we're going to come over here to the end in the middle is measure area. On my tool settings window, you're going to see that there are a number of different methods. At the very top here is element, and we're only going to be covering two of these methods, element and flood. But element allows you to pick a closed element and it will tell you what the area and the perimeter is. You also can do a fence if you have a fence active. If you have elements, closed elements that intersect each other, you can calculate the area. You can do it the same thing, union elements that again are closed or and touching. You also can do the difference, subtracting one element from another, and you can do multiple elements. The other method is flood, and we'll talk about that second. And then the very last one is points, where you essentially do left clicks, creating a polygon. So the first one we're going to look at is element. So I'm going to change that to element. Again, this is a basic view. Down here under area unit, because of our working units, we're set to square feet, and our perimeter, the perimeter unit, is set to US survey feet. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick the interior of that planter because let's say I need to determine how much mulch that I would need. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to see on the tool settings window that I've got 56 square feet. It also gives me a perimeter. So if I needed to put in like root barrier or some kind of other treatment around the edges, I would get an idea of perimeter length too. So now the next method is going to be flood. This is probably one of the more commonly used methods. So if I select that, I now get an additional option, locate interior shape. So we're going to see what this looks like without that. So I'm going to go ahead and move my cursor into this gray area here. And let's say we were going to figure out how much square footage there is for this entire area. We aren't going to be subtracting out the planters. So I'm going to left click in this area. You're going to see it highlight. It tells me what it's going to measure by highlighting it. I'm going to accept that by doing another data. On the tool settings window, we see the area is 13,519 square feet and some change. We also see a perimeter there, 542 feet and change. Now let's say we needed to calculate this for another material, let's say pavers or something else, and we wanted to be more accurate about this. This time we're going to tell it to locate the interior shapes. So on the tool settings window, I'm going to check locate interior shapes going to repeat the same process, move into the grid area, and I'm going to data, left click, and what you'll see is it highlights that same interior area, but it's excluding the planters. There's two planters in there. So now if I data to accept, my area is now less. It's 12,919 square feet and some change. And also my perimeter has changed because it's increased because I have more perimeter area. Now there was another method for measuring multiple elements and we're going to need to change our method from flood back to element. And just as we did with the measure length tool where we used element selection and we selected multiple elements, we're going to see that we can select multiple shapes and then we can get an area calculation. So I'm going to be using element selection and I'm going to be selecting this interior planter shape. I'm going to select that interior planter shape there. I'm going to go to my measure area tool. I'm going to hit space bar. First icon, third row. I'm going to go back to measure area. And because I had it set to element, you're going to see it automatically recognized it and it said 312 square feet. So that is the total of those two elements. If you didn't want to be selecting the shapes one at a time to calculate area for mulch or something else like that, you can just select them all, go to measure area, make sure the method is set to element, not flood, and then it'll give you the area. And in this case, perimeter doesn't apply because these elements aren't connected together. Under the area, you can just copy the value and right click and copy if you wanted to paste that into a spreadsheet or text in the file. So those are the basics about measure and the measure tools. 
and we will see you in the next video.